Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Will Bridges from 123 Trade. Trading session is just about to get started. I hope you guys are having a great week. I am uh, still full from Thanksgiving yesterday. So we've got a lot to look at. I'm not sure if you guys have been paying attention to the news or charts or any of that, but there's been tons of movement. Uh, the New Zealand dollar actually has fallen substantially since they raised the interest rate this week, which is, uh, well, kind of contrarian to what really should happen theoretically. But a lot of things get predicted in the market. A lot of things get priced in early. So we're going to take a look at that um, in this session here today. Um, I do want to make sure that the audio works. You guys can see the screen. I haven't changed it yet. You guys should be looking at the FX chief on the homepage right now. Let me get this uh, questions box open so that I can see that you guys are responding. Thanks, Tony. Good morning, Gary, Val, Dave. How we doing? Should be lots of fun today. Nobody else is working today, so I uh, would say I feel I feel pretty good about maybe trying to find a couple opportunities in the market. So should be lots of fun. How we doing, Neville, Trevor? But we are ready to go. I'll get into the nitty gritties, cover our base. What this says is that if you put your money in the Forex or any market for that matter, then your capital is at risk. You have to risk it to get the biscuit, people. There's no such thing as a guaranteed trade or a guaranteed investment. There's also no such thing as a guaranteed bet on sports. Um, and I do have to kind of pony up on a, uh, a little bet that I made on the Gators. Paul Simpkins won the bet. I have to make sure that I announce that Paul has won the bet and that I lost. <laughs> so we will be using stop losses with all of our trades because there is a chance that you can be wrong, people. And that is a real thing. Um, but if you do have questions, some of you might be here for the first time. A lot of the names in here I recognize. Uh, but uh, if you do have questions, silence is violence. I'm going to talk about a lot of things. We're going to cover the fundamentals of the market. We're going to cover, you know, news. We're going to look at tons of technicals in here. I'm going to do lots of chart analysis. If you guys have something specific that you want to look at that maybe you've been staring at for the last couple of days and you think, oh, I think up, but you're not sure, you can ask. And I'll give you my opinion. I can't tell you exactly what's going to happen, but I can tell you what I think. And uh, if that's something that you guys want, then by all means, speak. Thanks, Tony. We can look at the Euro USD. I think that one's getting at a pretty low price. And uh, let's, uh, let's actually just get the show on the road. I think if you're watching this recording on YouTube and you have no idea who we are, uh, basically one, two, three trade. Uh, we assist in getting regulated, secure brokerage. We want to make sure people have the most bang for their buck in their trading account. And we want to make sure they understand how it works. So uh, the way we go about that, I'm going to show people more or less what I've learned over the last seven, eight years when it comes to charting analysis. If there's an issue with the chart or how to run a robot or whatever it is, we show that stuff in these trading sessions here and we do these weekly. That's an ongoing thing. We just want to make sure people, well, don't get stuck at that. I don't know what to do next phase. Okay. So there's a ton of that information on our website. If you guys haven't seen this on our website, um, this is the news page that's on the website. Okay. So there's also an ebook on this news page. I think that is actually not free if you, but if you get it on a different site, um, which I know it's not free if you get it on a different site, but if you come right here, there's an ebook on basically how to score the news and how to rank uh, the sentiment on every major economy in the world. So if I read, I, you know, I don't necessarily have to read all this news, but I can see that there's, you know, a stimulus coming out in the US. Thanksgiving is happening, so people are spending money. Um, today is Black Friday. It's the biggest sales day of the year in the United States right now. Uh, weekly jobless claims are, are at a 52 year low. That sounds pretty strong. You know, dollar reigns as hawkish Federal Reserve stands out among central banks. So the dollar has been absolutely crushing people. And it's not surprising because, you know, you'll, if you download the ebook that's on this page, then you'll understand that this article up top gets about a third of all traffic when you Google the word U.S. economy. Okay, so, and the second one gets, I think, 17.9%, 11.7%, whatever. You work down the list and you know who's reading the most good news and who's reading the most bad news. That's what this page is for. Okay, if you guys want more educational type of stuff, the YouTube page on here is basically our YouTube channel. If you want more than what's on this page, go to the YouTube channel. And if you want to see recordings of this type of thing, you can subscribe and get them as soon as I post them to YouTube. That's probably the fastest way for you to get it, just in case I can't get an email out to send it to you. 
Uh, but that said, there's education on here as well. So if you want to know more about what lot size to trade with, all that other fun stuff, then all that's down here. Okay, but let's go ahead and get to the fun part, the stuff that a lot of you came to see today. Let's pull up the charts. And I know, well, I, I did a little bit of trading without you guys. You know, I guess this is what happens when I, uh, well, I don't know. I, I guess I don't feel bad about anything I did. Okay, so NZD, we're going to look at that. Um, I've got a couple, I've got a big winner going on this pound cat. This was a pending order that we did in this session, I think last week and uh, maybe the week before even. So I'll, I'll show you guys that one real quick. We'll see if we want to keep this one or maybe take our profit and run. 200, uh, 178 pips is a decent win. I'm going to have to manage these other trades. This looks like a pretty sexy trade to me. So I'm going to leave this one and uh, hopefully keep getting paid by it. Okay, so let's keep running through our list here. Let's look at this dollar CAD, looks pretty flat. And we are in the sell position, which is, uh, I think this was also a pending sell that we had set up here. So let's come down to our day chart. I'm gonna give myself a little bit more real estate here if I can, uh, maybe I can't, hold on. It's not showing the button for me here, uh, maybe not. Yeah, for some reason I'm not able to do that. But it does look like we just kind of stung our entry point just now. And I don't know if you guys can see this. The one thing that I want to fix on this while we're here, I want to make sure I have a stop loss and a take profit. So I'm just going to add, you know, 100, 200, and then I'm going to adjust this after. Okay, so I'm going to click OK. So now I have a stop loss and a take profit. My stop loss, if I want it to be a little bit higher above this high, I just got to click on it and drag it up. And my, you know, level below that I would want to come to, you know, I may just look and see what this range is here and try to trade the consolidation zone because it looks like it's a big it's a big trade. So maybe I just look to get down to this 382, okay? So now my risk reward looks better than one to one. I'm at least one and a half to one, probably somewhere close to, uh, as far as indices on Smart Trader, there's um, what kind of indices, Tony? Uh, there's a lot of, uh, well, let's just say there's indexes on uh, currencies. US 30, I don't think is in here. There are a lot of other indices in here, but not that one. There's a few others that I want also. Chris Pulver's requested a bunch. Uh, trust me, there's a lot of kicking, screaming analysts that want all sorts of stuff like that. So um, I'm not sure when, but I can find out for you guys. Um, send me an email to brokers at 123trade.com um, and I'll check on that for you guys next week and see what the deal is with the uh, index thing. But yeah, so we're set up on this dollar Canadian. I'm going to sit in this because if the news is telling me that the dollar is the absolute jam and it has been for a while, we're at a high price. You know, if we come here, we look, you know, the reason why I'm, we sold here to begin with is because there's a previous high here. Okay. So this thing has been rising. Okay. But if I, if I zoom up, okay, zoom out, come to my highest time frame, just clear everything else that's on the screen here. Yes. That is a bull candle right now. Do I, do I believe that the dollar can stay strong? I mean, it could, but at the end of the day, it's about where I can manage my risk. And I've got a high that we haven't breached in a couple of months versus the price we're at now. And this thing has fallen predominantly since March of 2020. Okay, so if I know that the dominant trend is down, then I'm gonna be looking down. That's just it. Okay, so it could come up a little bit higher. We could come up and try to test this a B boundary here. You never know, could lose this trade if I'm afraid of that sort of thing. And I think that I might want to get in again. If we get to that price, then I can always do something like this, move my stop loss above that, that level. So if it does try to inch towards this higher range, then I can reload and just go ahead and click a place order here. This is a pending order, pending sell. We'll do a nice small trade so I don't have to I don't have to worry about it. Actually, you know, I don't want to I don't want to do that. I want to use my existing stuff. So place. Okay, so I'm going to reload if this thing does get up to our AB boundary above. Okay, so my risk rewards not fantastic where I am now, but I already know that I'm willing to sell again from this high price that happened in August. Okay, so all things considered, you know, this may not end up being the best trade ever from where it is right now. I'm kind of calling a top on this month. Okay. A lot of spending has already happened. It does look like it's been bullish, but that said, I'm already in 
And at this point, I just want to manage this trade and make sure that, well, I'm not going to change my mind to get out of it right now. Nothing has happened yet. Okay, so all that said, let's keep on moving. Let's get to, get to this NZD JPY. This one's been a hot mover, and I may end up being in this trade for quite some time because I am bullish on the NZD. Um, and as I mentioned, the interest rate decision was the other day. I think that was right up here. Okay, the market's fallen 200, 230 pips since the interest rate decision. So what I want to do here is figure out where I may want to reload on this opportunity because I am still bullish. Okay, and I'll show you guys why I'm still bullish. Okay, I'm going to zoom all the way out here. I want to make the whole world in my hands. I want this to be small. And I'm just going to do the same thing I do on all these. Okay, line on the top. And I know sometimes I don't cover as much detail on this as I should with you guys because it gets a little bit monotonous for me. I've drawn those two lines a few thousand times at this point, it feels like. Uh, but that said, important to have and understand what's going on. So I'm just trying to whittle this down just like I would, you know, if I was going to carve a toy. Okay, so there we go. There's an old trend line break. I guess that would be a counter trend because we've got this kind of, you know, diverging sideways thing happen here. Okay, but we did just get another break there. Okay, so what I'm looking at is that the last time we had a break on one of these counter trend lines, okay, we had a very big opportunity. You're talking about from the point of the break up to the top, 2,872 pips. Okay, so right now, this thing has come up. As of right now, it's at 600 or so. Okay, if it does inch its way towards this line up here, we're talking about 16, 1,700 pips. I don't think we get necessarily the same move we got before, but you know, this is a monthly time frame. This is long term. Banks don't move their money every 15 minutes. Okay, so I want to come down. I'm thinking uptrend. Okay, for a lot of reasons. One of them being that there is a higher low. Okay, so these are this is a low here. You guys can all see that. This is a higher low right here. Okay, here's a higher low on the right side of the trend line. Okay, so here's a high, here's a higher one. And here's an even higher one. Okay, so to me, this means uptrend. Is it as aggressive as I had thought it would be from the interest rate hike? Apparently not. Okay, so that being said, I'm still in it. I haven't lost. Okay, and that's really not, you know, that is kind of the point. If you want your account to look pretty, I mean, you can close out trades whenever you want, but I don't want to pay commission. And the thing about this NZD trade is that I actually get paid. Um, interest overnight so I make money just for holding this one open okay so even if I'm losing the trade just because I'm long on the New Zealand dollar versus the Japanese yen that kind of you know it, well let's just say I can sit in it with negative pips for a long time get paid every day that I hold it overnight and care a little bit less about the time I spend in the mud because I get paid to be in the mud okay so that's really the whole premise with carry trading. If you guys have ever heard that term, okay, so that is that is exactly what it, this is. So since I have an advantage on the interest rate, I'm gonna look for places that I could buy this again. Okay, I'm already in it twice. Okay, I've got a, one of these. I got in. I got in my first trade. I went too heavy. That was a mistake. Okay, so this would be if I closed it out right now, it would be the biggest loss that this account has seen. I think. Um, so. That being said, you know, I'm not really trying to clock that loss. I really would prefer if I can find a better opportunity to reload on this thing. And if I am going to take a loss like that, I want to be able to take a win somewhere. And I didn't get quite what I wanted. We'll try the day chart on this. Okay, so right now on this most recent wave, okay, we've we're at about our 786 86 price down here. Okay, so we're pretty deep in this retracement zone. This thing has been bullish. It's testing this zone over here. Anybody that's ever talked about supply and demand, there's a lot of it right here. Okay, so uh, and what that really means is that there's a lot of buyers and sellers, and we got caught in this sideways range for, well, all the way from June until it broke out in October. Okay, so we spent a lot of time in this range, and then it busted out to the north. So I'm thinking that if it's in this range, it might bust out to the north again. Okay, this might just be my buy zone. Okay, so I've got my demand down here. I've got a I've got a supply zone, which is where I would expect people might sell. 
you know, people might start selling here. Okay, just because there's lots of sideways movement that happened, and we broke out to the south. Okay, so I'm really just working on a couple of, I, mean, I use a lot of different strategies if you guys can't tell. They're all kind of the same thing. Okay, so everything is pretty much a range or a trend, and that's just kind of the way the world works. Okay, so there's a million different tools to measure a range and a trend, and you guys will know a lot about that if you keep watching these sessions, or if you just, I don't know, buy some education from somebody. Okay, so let's let's see where we're at with our trend on the bottom here. I actually might need to crunch this down. I need to fix this uh, so that I can actually, I'm going to refresh this page, because I can't close my order window for some reason, and that's really uh, disadvantageous to me showing more screen. Now I want to show all the screen. <laughs> but I hope you guys have been having a nice holiday season. It's been um, it's been pretty beautiful here. I ate entirely too much yesterday. I still feel full. Um, <laughs> so there is that. Um, but now I can actually crunch this down and we can look at this a little bit more cleanly. Okay. So I just want to get a trend line on the bottom here. And this is very much where we are right now. You guys see that we're on the trend line in the demand zone at the 786 retracement level. I feel like this is a good time for me to go ahead and just reload. Okay, so I'm going to reload. 0.01, I'm going to just get in again small. My stop, my limit, the stop is going to have to be, you know, realistically from this price I'm at now, it's going to have to be about 175 pips. Okay, I'm going to move this after anyways. My limit up top, we're going to make this about, what is it, what am I down? Something like 200 on one of these, we'll say 250 pips. Okay, so essentially I just want to get back to where my first entry was. Okay, that's really all I need to do so that I can make that a relatively, uh, oh, hold on. Oh, I didn't do that in the right box. 175, 250. But yeah, basically all I want to do is get back to my original entry. So that can either be a really small loss. Maybe I can even win that trade. And this one, I'm at a better price. You know, I'm bullish because, well, let's just say the bank is bullish. And if the bank is bullish, I want to be bullish. That's pretty much what this is about. Okay, so I've got take profits. I've got entries set. Okay, my take, all of my take profits are above my previous entries. So if we hit this take profit level, which is basically still in my consolidation zone at the 382, so if this thing moves sideways and doesn't extend upward, then I can win this trade. Okay, so that's really what I'm trying to do. Okay, so let's keep on moving here. Let's check out our NZD Swiss. This is another one that's depressed a little bit. This is another one that I get paid just for holding it open. Okay, so even if I do lose pips, I get paid every night. And this one is, is taking an absolute nosedive. This one, I might have to be a little bit, uh, well, this seems like it be, might be a little bit more cavalier of a sell uh, because we have not made any time. It, it looks like we're accelerating downward right now. I may actually end up closing out this trade. Um, but let's go ahead and get a trend on here, see what we got going. Okay, and it does look like we just broke our downtrend. Okay, so that doesn't necessarily mean that I have to sell. You know, if I come back here and I show you guys this, that's what happened when we broke our downtrend there. It went up a lot more later. Okay, we broke our downtrend there. It went up a lot more later. Okay, so we broke our downtrend there and we fell for a long time and we haven't really got back to that price. Okay, so we don't really have a defined pattern as far as trend goes, at least in my opinion, you know, cause I can draw this one here. You know, this one here, we, we broke our, we broke our downtrend there and then we went up. So let's maybe go to a little bit of a higher time frame. Take a look at this and see if there's anything at this price that we need to pay attention to. If there's support, we may buy. If there's not, I may just close this out and be done with it. Uh, smart support. Okay, so that's at 62. Okay, so we're a couple hundred pips away from that. If I go ahead and pull my Fibonacci range on this monthly chart, zoom in here, get rid of my order window so we can have a little bit more real estate. 
Okay, so right now we're right at the edge of the AB boundary. Okay, so this actually might be, you know, a place where I want to reload, and it might actually be a place where I could add a stop loss underneath my support level at 62, uh, three down here. Okay, so I'm gonna get in small with this one too. I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'll adjust these after. I'm just gonna click on buy. So I'm playing this one like a breakout. Realistically, I think it could come all the way up to this 69 price. Okay, I don't see any reason why it can't happen. Uh, frankly, this the Swiss franc doesn't make sense for it to be strong. The only reason why I believe it might be is because of all the vaccine passport stuff that's going on right now in Europe is going to slow down the economy. Whether you want that stuff or not, okay, that's pretty much what's going to happen. They're going to slow down action on the euro and they are very much, uh, people are going to move into the Swiss franc when that happens. Okay, so Germany's talking about it being the worst it's ever been, which is, you know, kind of frightening to say the least if you're trying to bet on the euro right now. And we're going to get to the euro USD here in a second. But I just want to make sure I managed all this stuff and I make sure that Everybody understands, you know, more or less how to do that. None of these amounts are big enough to scare me. Okay, that's why we trade small. Because you guys don't realize that sometimes you can see this 230 pip move in a place that doesn't make sense. They literally raised the interest rate for that to happen. This pound USD trade, this was another pending order we had set. This is why planning trades is a great idea. Because if you guys notice the pending orders that we that we had set, I think there's three of them in here. It's dollar CAD, we're down $1.70. Okay, we're up 178 pips. These ones that I didn't have pending orders on are the ones that I'm in the mud on because I just got excited and I bought the NZD uh, the night before they decided to raise rates. And I went from up to down big. And I'm sure all of you can relate to that sort of situation. If you've ever traded anything, um, that can happen to you. Uh, but the key is, is to keep it small, be able to manage the position so that if it does dig on me, I can sit and wait and buy it again. Because, well, let's just say none of these currencies are going to disappear tomorrow. At least I don't think so. Uh, but let's go. We're on our pound USD now. This one was a pending buy opportunity. And just to show you guys, I think that I think this is just a Fibonacci level, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let's come down to our weekly chart. Crunch this thing down a little bit. It is going pretty well so far, though. We are getting the bounce that you want to see immediately. Oop. Yeah, realistically, this is just a previous level. I think this was just a price pocket trade that we made. Um, regardless, I'm going to stick it. I'm staying in it. Okay, let's get on this Euro USD. The euro does look like it is bouncing. We've got some existing analysis on here that might actually point to that. Let's uh, zoom this out a little bit. And I've drawn all these lines a bunch of times, I think, in this session. Well, this is the most popular instrument to trade in the world uh, by a lot. This that gets traded, traded an absolute ton. So we could see a little bit of a bounce here. Uh, just in looking at where our trend lines are, we are not quite to the, to the bottom that I was expecting on this and then really that's just where supply and demand okay collide which is right here okay this top line here is what people call supply this bottom line is demand okay so demand is when you're you know people buy for the price to get up higher is there audio can you guys hear me i'm not sure if uh all right perfect you guys can hear me Perfect. I'll just let Trevor know. If that, if you guys ever lose audio in these presentations, the easiest thing to do is just to close out the window and open it back up again. Uh, but at this point, we are at the 618. Okay, so we're on the weekly time frame. I know a lot of people like to do tons of analysis all the time. But, you know, as a trader myself, if I can find an idea that I like on the highest time frame, then I don't really care about what's on the lower one because there's so much opportunity to play with. And that's the way that I see that because this is our current market price. Okay, we're right at the 618 here. You guys can see that on a weekly on a weekly chart. Okay, so if I put my stop loss, 
somewhere outside of this AB boundary. Is it far away? That's 500 pips away. Okay, so it's 500 pips away. If I trade a 0 0.01 and risk $50 in this $1,700 account, then, you know, I can always buy again. But what I would expect is to be able to trade it all the way back up to the top here. And we'll make this actually green. This is where I would rip the tape on life and decide I don't want to do this anymore. Okay, and realistically, if it does dig more on me, I'm going to plan to buy again. So I'll plan to get out earlier based on that. There's our current range. So even if we don't hit new high prices and we just hit the high prices that we hit, you know, a couple of years ago, then, you know, all I'm going to do, and this is a long-term trade that I'd be looking at here, okay? Because we're about to raise the debt ceiling here in the U.S. I want to pick where I would want to reload. If it gets down to this 8.6 price, I'm in like Flynn. I would love to buy again at that price. Would I like for it to come up right now? Of course I would, okay? The confirmation for that, I don't know that that's happened yet. Maybe we come down to our one hour because we are still below our long-term trend, but this is kind of our short-term trend here. Okay, so we just broke that. So we did make a higher high here for the first time in a while. We didn't get a lot of higher highs on the right side of any trend line, uh, but this does look like it could be on its way up, at least for the, cons for the considerable future. Uh, but that said, and I'm also long in the pound USD. So uh, let's, uh, let's get back up to our week chart because this is really where I'm going to plan this trade because I'm going to plan to be in this for a long time. We're talking months, hundreds. This is a thousand pip call that we're looking at right now. Okay, so a thousand pips in one trade is something that I would wait a decent amount of time. I may not wait forever for this thing, but uh, realistically, you know, other people may want to turn a robot on in this situation if you're not comfortable staying in it for as long as I'm talking about. You, know, you may just turn an automation on, set it for buys only, and that way you don't get in until the system confirms up move. You know, but you know, I, uh, I, I I like to look at this in a way of can I afford the risk? Can I do I have the time to wait? And when I say can I afford the risk, does that mean that you know I can sit in you know fifty eight dollars of red for however long? It's not a lot of money as far as I'm concerned. If I, if I go $500 in the red, I'll be okay. I'll probably just add more money to my account to make myself feel better about the percentages. But end of the day, I mean, I can absolutely afford every bit of risk I have in this account. If I lose $1,700 in here today, I'll be okay. But I'm not exposed enough to do that. I really can't. Okay, I think I could really only lose about 10% of my account if everything, if the wheels fell off on all of my trades. So that's really where you need to be uh, or less than that. I'm aggressive. I've been doing this a long time. This is a small account in my opinion, um, but we're going to continue to grow this. I think we started somewhere around 500 bucks, uh, but I'm going to keep growing it. You guys will get to see me trade bigger and bigger as time goes on. Um, but I want to give you guys an idea of what it takes to actually grow an account. Um, and it's really just don't lose, <laughs> don't lose too much and, uh, and give yourself enough time to have big wins. And that's really what it's all about. So I'm going to go ahead and click on buy here. Okay, and then I'm just gonna click and drag my entries here. I guess I timed out because I sat on this for too long. Price is out of date. Let me do it. Hold on. I may have to open up MetaTrader 4 so I can take this trade because it doesn't want to let me do it. Try one more time. Nope. So I got MetaTrader 4 open. Now let's get over to our Euro USD. And this is the same account we were just looking at, if you guys were wondering. Okay, so just click buy. We'll come up to our weekly time frame because this is where I made the decision. Okay, my stop loss that I set was down here. And this is something like a $50 risk, I think. 58 bucks. Okay. So my exit price, I'm looking up at top. Okay. Where this thing has turned around in the past. Okay. I'm looking for $90. Okay. So if this thing digs on me more down to say, maybe this level, I'm going to set another buy limit and I'm going to get in it again. Okay. Because I like it at this price. I like it even more at the lower one. And that's really just it. Okay. So now I'm set up. I don't have to do anything. I've got two orders set. I'm already in live. Let's get back to our charts. 
where I can actually do better analysis. I love Smart Traders analysis. Sometimes it is going to be a little finicky because you are using an outdoor, pla an outside platform to you know place trades. But uh, when it comes down to it, this thing's got an incredible amount of power for uh, the analysis part of the equation. So let's keep on moving. I think we looked at all of these trades. We looked at the Euro USD. I like the I like this Euro USD. I think that a uh, fun one to look at might be this Aussie New Zealand because if they just raise interest rates in New Zealand maybe happening in Australia soon we could see vol good volatility here uh, we did actually catch some pips at the bottom of this uh, I already closed out I got excited I guess but this looks bullish to me let's come down to our one hour okay and well we are getting a little bit of a uh, bearish crown here so this thing could come down to our 104 price. This is about 50, 60 pips away. Okay, where our blue line is right now. And, you know, realistically speaking, that might actually be a great trade down to that price. Let me go ahead and take a look here. And check out our pending orders. We have an Aussie New Zealand in here. And we do. We have a buy limit at 10. Let's see. 102.653, so a little bit lower, way lower. Let's pull this up. So now I'm gonna have my pending order at this blue line. Okay, so rather than close that out, I'm just gonna get in it, I'm gonna plan to get in at that price. And what I'm also gonna do, okay, since we've got a lower low that happened up here, this is what I'm looking at. Okay, we've got a low. Okay, we've got another slightly lower low right next to it. Okay, so that to me means that we might be making a little bit of a crown right there. We are still above our trend line. This would be a scalp trade if I want to do anything. Okay, so we're above trend line. This is a counter trend move. So I need to figure out how far I would want to go. I'm going to use my Fibonacci tool to do something like that. And we're going to have to go to a higher time frame. Although we are at a familiar high right now. Let's see. Let's maybe come down to our four hour chart. Actually, let's just use the smart fib tool. The uh, smart analytics tool. Fibonacci's, scans, get them all. All right, so this one put them on here for me. Uh, we're at the AB boundary now. It already hit the 382. Actually, we missed our 382. Okay, so I may actually trade just back to that 382. So I'm going to click sell on this right now. And I'm going to sell it back to our 382 level here. Right there. Okay, that's where I'm that's where I'm going to aim at 10442. Okay, so I'm just going to open this up in MT4 real quick. Oop, can't trade that one. I got to do use the American stuff. All right. So I'm just going to click sell. I'm going to do this real quick. Okay, this is a scalp trade that I'm looking for. All right, and that's it. $2, that's probably not enough for me to really care. But either way, it's a scalp trade. I'm less likely to win a scalp trade, in my opinion, than I am a position trade because I'm using less data to make the decision. So whatever, I'll take the $3. It's a gallon of gas. Well, not anymore. It's like two thirds of a gallon of gas. But I'll let that happen in the background while I live my life. Anytime. Let me get back to our smart trader charts. Okay, so I'm in as a seller. Okay, I'm planning to dump this trade before I start buying it at lower prices. Okay, so uh, if it does just take off, I'm gonna lose a dollar or something, whatever. But I don't like to wait for a, for entry if I don't have to. You know, if I see a good opportunity to sell towards something and then buy away from it, uh, that feels like a much better opportunity than only taking one of those, just my opinion. Uh, but this is the Aussie New Zealand. This one's a little bit sideways all the time. So another reason why I'm comfortable going sideways on this thing. Uh, but that being said, I am kind of calling a top. And the only reason why I'm okay with that is because I can manage the risk. 
Um, let's keep on moving here. I think uh, another fun one, actually. Let's get over to our, our, you know what we didn't look at here today? We didn't go to Forex Factory. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at this. This week. Okay, I guess I did talk about a lot of this stuff, but preliminary GDP was under expectation. Still better than last time. Uh, otherwise, inflation's high. Okay, that's really all that's on here. Bailey came out and spoke. You know, the Bank of England will have to act when inflation gets into wages. Okay, so that's what really you should be watching for. The wage growth in England, um, as far as what their indicator is going to be of when they make their next move is wage growth. Okay, next week, okay, if you guys can see this, pretty busy week. We have non-farm payroll happening in the U.S. Okay, we don't have any forecast data. This stuff comes out usually on Saturday, Sunday, uh, and you'll have an idea of how many jobs they expect to get created in the last month. We've gotten kind of flat, but it's still a huge number all the time. You guys can see this. You know, we didn't used to get, you know, half a million jobs a month. Yeah, I feel like that's a little bit crazy. Uh, but realistically speaking, uh, these numbers are big. You can look at the list of them here. So if you want to see what they've been, okay, you can get, get further back here. We get back into like normal times pre-COVID. You're talking anywhere from 100 to 300 is typically what we would see. So we're seeing very high numbers as far as, you know, well, joblessness is down in the U.S., but there's other measures. It's just they change the way that they measure these types of things. Okay, so U.S. economy has been strong. The only issue we've got is this other thing over here, this U.S. debt clock. If I've shown you guys this before, a lot of you guys have probably seen this. But this is the U.S. national debt, 28,989. Okay, this isn't an exact number. It's just based on more or less the speed of how fast we print money here in the U.S., and how fast we create money. But you guys can see this has gone up maybe, you know, $200,000 since I started talking and showing this page. So it's really kind of funny when people complain about the government spending a few million dollars. It happens every five minutes regardless. So uh, that being said, another fun thing to look at down here is the paper to gold ratio has fallen. This was 88. Okay, what this means is that uh, there is more actual gold per contract that exists right now than there has in a while. Um, and paper silver is, well, if you guys click buy in your account, you're, you're contributing to the paper silver that exists because you have a contract on the silver, not the actual physical. Okay. So that's why silver, in my opinion, isn't, you know, 186 times the price it is now in the, in the thousands, uh, gold, if there were no paper contracts for gold, you know, you're talking about 80 times 2,000, $260,000 an ounce. Feels kind of crazy, but that's really how that breaks out without the contracts that exist. So, you know, if those of you that think that the dollar will, might crash or fiat currency might crash, you know, that's really where there might be the biggest opportunity known to man would be in somewhere like this 186 to one range because 186 times in your money is really good. If you guys are aware. Uh, there are some cryptocurrencies out there that people have been able to do pretty amazing things with also but let's go ahead and take a look at silver okay this is another fun one xag usd and if anybody has any particular currency cross they want to look at any particular commodity anything like that then bring it on tell me and we've got smart analytics on here let's go to all this thing's measuring all of my fibonacci levels okay so we are at the 382 right now. And just to show you guys, I'm going to draw a box on here. This is my favorite tool if you guys haven't picked up on that. Okay, that's pretty much the range we've been living in, that red box. And I'll get rid of Smart Analytics so you guys can see just that. Okay, so we've been very obedient in this range. Okay, and if I come down a little bit tighter, I've got three places that the market got to that I could have sold from. Okay, on the bottom here, I've got, you know, one, two, three places I could have bought from. Okay, so all things considered, let's come down to our weekly time frame, work my way down, and this is what I'm looking at, okay? This is literally what I'm paying the most attention to because it's the most obvious thing for me to draw, okay? I've got two sideways trend breaks there, and this looks very clean, okay? And clean is cool, just my opinion. I don't think I need this thing to pop up, hold on. 
go away. All right. Okay, so now what we're looking at, we've got a somewhat of a falling knife happening here right now. We do have a higher high on the right side of our trend line. Okay, so we've got a high here. There's another slightly higher one there. So I am bullish, especially since this thing has been falling for the last two weeks and I might be at a low price. So let's go ahead and get our Fibonacci tool out and measure what kind of low price we're at and figure out which one we may think is the best. And a lot of people like this 5.0 price. A lot of people like this lower 6.18 price. But as far as silver goes and the levels that I am an absolute buyer at, those two levels, I am a buyer, okay, in blue. I can't actually physically place a trade on a CFD on silver here like you guys can in your accounts, which makes me quite jealous. But our extension level is all the way up here at $26.9, almost $27. This is a very large move on silver. Okay, if it does this, let me get rid of this box so you can actually see these lines. Um, let me get my stop loss on here before I do that. But this is essentially what I'm looking for. Okay, and it's really just about being able to manage the risk reward. Okay, and does it make sense? Okay, so if I enter at this blue price to try to make all the way up to this green price, okay, that's a very good risk reward. We're talking, you know, two to one better. Okay, that's huge. Okay, gold, I'm. I'm just as bullish on gold, if not more right now. We go over to XAU USD. We're gonna look at oil here in a second as well. There's been a lot of talk about oil. I'll show you some news on oil also. Gold already looks like it's been, it started to move up this week. Okay, so you guys can see on gold, and this is a weekly chart we're looking at here. Okay, we've got some higher lows that are forming. There's one, here's another one, here's another one. Okay, so that does look like we're getting a bend. Okay, and it does look like we're getting a bend on the top as well, but this thing has been having a hard time getting to higher prices. You see, we break our trend, we fall. We break our trend, we fall. We break our trend, we fall. But we're kind of bottling ourselves up on the, with this somewhat, I guess, if you, we zoom in closer, you guys will be able to see this a little better, I think. But we're kind of bottling up. Okay, so if I pull my trend on the bottom here, Gold could come down a little bit lower, still stay within trend. Uh, we, we are falling from a recent high right now. Hold on, extra line. We are very much moving sideways. Okay, so this thing's getting a lot of energy to the right. Um, well, obviously it's going to the right. To the up position, we are getting higher highs. Okay, this is a higher high on the right side of the trend line. We haven't gotten confirmation of an uptrend though. And the reason why we don't have confirmation of the uptrend We've got these highs here. There's actually three of them. And then we broke that pivot. Okay, so that indicates to me bullish activity and a potential like U-turn that, that could be happening here. Doesn't necessarily mean right now. Okay, so as far as silver, or as far as gold, I should say, okay, I'm a buyer at this slightly lower price here. Okay, the same reason as silver. This is somewhat of a falling knife right now. So I think this 1775 range feels real sexy. That's $25 lower, so. Uh, considerably lower if we want to get more measures on here which i like to do i like having the fibonacci tool as often as i can because it is a, the tool that i use to measure what a high and a what a low price looks like okay so this is our 618 actually we already bounced off of so reality this might be a buy right now i uh, just based on the fib waves and it might be a buy again at 1756 uh, if it does break lower so what i would be looking for and if you haven't traded this in your live account yet, trade it in a demo first so that you can understand how much it moves and how much profit loss that you can make in these situations because it is considerably bigger than you probably think. Considerably bigger. Okay, so if this thing does dig, okay, I'm gonna try to get out. Maybe my green level above 1900 feels like a great price. We've got previous high there also. So to break a, you know, seven, eight month high, that's what would have to happen. So that's really what I'm looking for on gold. Okay. Oil has been more confounding. And I'll show you guys why here in a second. But risk reward on gold, obviously much better at 1756 than it is where it is right now. Okay. So all things considered, I think 1756 may be a great price to get in. Uh, maybe even a little bit higher so we could catch where these other turnarounds might have been. Um, and what I'm looking at is this over here. Okay. And there's another also here and also here. And I don't get to choose where the market turns around. 
Okay, I just get to try to buy from those places and protect myself. That's really all that I'm looking for. Okay, are places where the market has previously turned, like it did here, okay, and get in at that price. Okay, so it's also turned at the, at the price I'm at right now. So that said, I think both of these are great opportunities. From a risk reward standpoint, that's really all that matters to me most of the time uh, because things are gonna be very you know, difficult to figure out if you go squarely on economics. Um, I don't know if you guys can see this. This is our old analysis on US oil. Seems like it worked out. Uh, so let's see if we can figure out what's going on now. I'm going to go ahead and delete all the stuff that's on here because it looks like this analysis is timed out because we already won that trade. Or at least the idea. So I don't think I actually, I, I didn't actually place this oil trade myself. Uh, because like I said, I cannot. Uh, but that said, we're falling like a rock right now. And a lot of that, I don't know if you guys have been paying attention to what, you know, has been going on with OPEC. You type oil in here. OPEC considers pausing oil production increase after Biden releases more crude. Okay, so what that means is OPEC is going to play back. If we go to uh, what they're talking about with Biden releasing crude is that we opened up the strategic reserve. And I want to say they put 50 million barrels. Uh Oil tumbles, 5% is new COVID variant, sparks global demand concerns. You know, I think it might just be because they added another, you know, $80 million, 80 million barrels in a couple of days between the U.S., the U.K., Japan. Okay, if we scroll down on here, I think uh, they might have the number for you in here. Bush administration authorized $20.8 million. Oh, so this has happened before. Uh, but it's been a very long time. A gallon of gas, 211 a year ago. But inflation is only 10% is what they tell us. <laughs> Which I think is really funny. Um, I guess it doesn't, it's not going to give us the number that they actually released here. I want, it, I'm, I'm fairly certain it's 50 million. Let's type in Biden oil strategic let's see but yeah you guys get the idea basically they're just trying to flood the market with short-term supply so that they can push the price down uh, but realistically they're not increasing capacity to produce more oil in the u.s so that's really going to have to stop at some point i mean we've got 713 million barrels in the reserve Okay, currently holds over 600. Okay, so max volume, we're not there. We've got space to buy more. Uh, but if you guys can see the government's at this crazy high for how much oil they've got. Um, we bought a lot of it uh, when the pandemic hit, we filled up. Uh, so they've got a lot of oil they bought at lower prices. So the government maybe just be selling that off. It's not that much money and all things considered. It's in the you know handful of billions. Okay, so it is a big big move in the oil market for them to add a few billion dollars worth of oil okay so all that said can't find the exact number on here second release 30 million dollar 30 million barrels that's old that's from 2005 um and actually we can go back and look at this 2005 one let's do that and then we'll come over to current okay so 2005 is all the way back here let's see Yeah, we were very, uh, very much at the $60, $70 range in 2005. Um, they didn't have a massive impact. If you guys can tell, the market went up big after they released all that strategic oil reserve. Uh, so I think that it could continue to fall a little bit further. I don't think that we're at quite where we want to get necessarily. Uh, well, let's just say I think we took it to as far down as we might want to sell it already. But as far as buying, I don't know if I'm ready to do that. So I'm just going to keep working my way down, see where we are in my fib ranges, make sure I'm at the right. I'm using all the highs and lows I should. This has been a very aggressive uptrend. Really, the 67 price is where I want to maybe think about becoming a buyer. Let's come down to the day chart. This is the one that uh, Goldman Sachs, I think, used. And they probably used the Fibonacci tool to call $80 oil all the way back in the summer. I don't know if you guys remember, we talked about that for a while. Uh, but we were... 
really put we we're really talking about eighty dollar oil for a long time really a hundred dollar oil is where i think it can go uh but that 67 price is what we mentioned before that's also the 618 on our day chart okay so this price that goldman called 80 80 bucks it's right here it's it's our previous range and what do you know we came up and we hit it okay so i think that goldman you know who people think is good at investing and calling big moves in the markets and typically they are you know then i i'm gonna go with what they think they trade millions of people's money okay a lot of money so if they're gonna make decisions with an incredibly larger amount than i've got in my account then you know that's more or less what I want to look for. Okay, so I become a buyer at this 618 price down here, 67.30 is about where I become a buyer, and then I'm pretty much a, you know, I'm I'm going to be looking for it to come up to this next high. Okay, and then I might look for some sideways movement, but that's all the way up at 97. dollars Okay, so this is a relatively large call. Okay, so those of you that can wait that long this could be very profitable that is that said it might also take a very long time for a trade like this to complete oh hold on and we'll get this line on top we'll make this one green so you guys can tell that's where i'm buying towards but that's basically what i'm looking at on oil we are at a falling knife right now so i'm not really ready to get in until we get to this demand zone at our 618 okay let's go ahead and get another rectangle on here my favorite tool Okay, but this is our this is our demand zone down here. You guys can see there's lots of prices that happened in here and then the market broke out above. Okay, so that said, that's where I look to become a buyer. It's really once we get into that green zone down there, uh, this one over here, it's shaded in the Fibonacci tool in Smart Trader for a reason. That's more or less what they're trying to tell you is that that's a demand zone. Okay, and there's less demand when it's lighter and it's yellow. Okay, so all those things said, um, if anybody has any other currency crosses that they want to look at, any other instruments they want to look at, before we call it a day here. But I think, uh, generally speaking, the markets are a little bit wonky today. Uh, but that said, this pound yen may be a fun one. It does look like it's at a nice low price. Okay, come to the all time frame. Now it looks like it may actually be making a big turn. Lots of yen strength if that happens. I may be a little bit afraid. Let's uh, let's go ahead and draw our trend here. That does tell a much different story immediately. This is why you look at the high time frame. Okay, this is why you do analysis. So you don't make a decision based on, you know, oh my gosh, I'm scared. Scared money won't make any money. Pretty much how that goes. So let's zoom in. Okay, we're on the backside test of our trend line right now. So this could be time. This could be go time. Either this thing's going to fall a lot or it's going to go up a lot. Okay, that's really all that this means to me is that this, there's going to be big volatility here. Okay, we're on the weekly time frame. Let's, let's check out Goldman's favorite. Let's check out the daily. Goldman's favorite also happens to be my favorite. Just so we're all on the same page. Uh, it does look like we busted below the line here. Let's zoom out as much as we can. Try to make this prettier. This is a little bit, a little bit more confusing on this chart. Let's go to the week. Let's draw our trend line from the week. Maybe we use the smart trend line tool here. Let's delete this. out of my way nope it found a totally different one maybe we use the smart analytics tool let's try that trend lines scan them all okay so right now dominant trend that this thing is finding is basically this last one that I just just drew here this blue one uh, so let's go ahead and actually delete my smart trend line that's here. Okay, so this thing is telling me dominant down. Um, and it is sideways for a considerable period of time. If we clear out all this stuff, we draw a little box on here. 
I'm just looking for a way that I can manage risk. If you guys, if you guys uh, understand, there's a lot of ways to do that. Okay, so this is really what our range has been. I mean, this also looks like a breakout on this time frame. We're getting, we got a higher high outside of this range. This is a buy, in my opinion. Just my opinion. Okay, so let's come down here, zoom in, figure out where our risk reward is, down to our daily chart. I'm always going to use the high time frames first and the most because that makes the most sense. Okay, so there, there is our new fib range. We're almost to the 786. There's lots of demand in this zone. So if I delete this big, massive green area that's down here, you guys probably have a little bit better idea of what I'm looking at with this. But demand zone is right here. We're in it, okay? If you guys can see that, you believe that this is still an uptrend because it's still making higher lows, then this is a place where, well, people like me are going to look to buy. And I'm about to do it with my own money. Because we've got lots of higher lows. You guys can see all these. These are obvious, okay? But we did make a higher one. This is actually a higher low up here, but we're kind of we just busted it. So went a little bit sideways. But that said, I mean, these highs up here are higher than these highs down here. Our lows, that lows, these lows up top are higher than these lows down here. And I'm getting higher highs in the top. Okay, so there's a high, here's a higher one, here's a higher one. I think bullish, okay, so all things considered, we're down at our blue level, we could come a little bit lower. This might be game time for me. I'm gonna go ahead and just click on buy and then adjust my stuff after. Okay, click this green line up top, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this. Oh, I gotta get off of my tool here. Unlock that. Okay, so I'm gonna aim at my green level above, just in case it digs a little bit lower. And I'm gonna pull my stop loss outside of my most recent AB boundary. Okay, risk reward on this is incredible. Okay, we haven't been lower than the price where, that I'm, where my stop loss is since September. So it's been you know a couple of months since we breached the lows that I've got here. And this it was also strong in August. If I want to go a little bit lower on this, I still can. My risk reward on top is pretty sexy. Okay, so I can even pull down a little bit lower. I can plan to buy it again if it digs. Okay, really up to you guys how you want to handle that stuff. But we haven't been below this price where my stop loss is since February. Okay, so I don't really need to be afraid of that as much. And if it does decide to get below the February price, then I'm out. Okay, then I'm out. Okay, but all that said, there's an opportunity to buy at the lower price. So there's really my opinion. Management is king. Okay, it's really all about, can I afford this risk? What has the trend been doing for the long term? Do I, if I wait longer, can I win? If you're trading against the long term trend, waiting longer to win is not going to happen. <laughs> so, so that's really the long and short of that. But I hope you guys enjoyed the session. I don't think there's anything else uh, necessarily that I want to dig in too deep on today. I think I've already got a lot of exposure in the market and I don't want to have too much in the wind, you know, because I, I want to give myself an opportunity to manage everything and not have an opportunity to get too far in the mud on any given trade. So I've already reloaded, doubled down on a couple of things here. I buttoned up some stop losses, take profit type stuff. So I've cleaned out. I'm good on this for a few days. If you guys uh, enjoy these presentations, let's just say they want me to do a lot of other things at the company at this point in my career. Um, I love doing these trading sessions. If you want them to keep happening, come to the Google machine, type in one, two, three trade and find us and leave me a review, uh, please. Uh, Cause I love doing these. If you guys like these sessions, I mean, I think, I think so far we've closed out somewhere close to a thousand pips on our uh, on the on the Canadian dollar prediction that we've done that's just since the beginning of Q4 yeah I showed all those trades in this room uh, but if you come here and give us a review very much appreciated it's the number one thing that you can do to help us out and the cool part about it is that it's free are you guys there yet do you guys need the link who needs the link all right I'll put that in the chat for you guys uh, but we are out of time here today and uh, it is holiday weekend here 
I actually had the day off today, but I loved coming to do these. So if, um, if you guys can't help me out, give me a quick review. Um, and you know, by all means, if you guys need any help with anything, if you have any questions, okay, send us an email. The email address you want to use is brokers at one, two, three trade.com. If you have questions about your access you know, what education, how to get into these sessions, if you're watching this on YouTube and you want to watch these live, um, then by all means, send us an email brokers at one, two, three trade. Again, this is Will Bridges from your team here. And, uh, Hey, I think, uh, I think it's time to take the dog for a walk. You guys have a wonderful rest of your weekend. And as always be good or be good at it. Take care people.